Hello everyone, this is my introduction video to my channel. My name is Marcus, and to get started, I really wanted to share something that I was passionate about. I honestly didn't know where to start, but what came to mind is my love for computer gaming and my obsession with small form factor computer cases. So I decided to talk about this computer case that I made. I recently graduated last year with an industrial design degree, and this case is my final. I want to explore how things are made and share it with all of you. With that, let me share with you my process and steps I took to make this computer case. All right, so in the background for a while now, you've seen me mess around with my computer case parts. You know, the top hat, the body, the inner frame, and you know, the bottom piece. So this is a program called Shaper 3D. It's an app on the iPad App Store. And it's just, it, it's great. It's simple, it's easy to use. There's a lot of, um, you know, movement with your hands. And I feel like that tactile feed, field feedback of uh, being able to move something by panning or rotating helps you design in a way that's like, uh, it's, it's more fluid. That's the best way I could put it. It's a fluid experience. So there are awesome apps like SolidWorks and Fusion 360, which are extremely feature packed. Like there's a lot of, engineering and SOLIDWORKS and there's a lot of CAM in Fusion 360, you know, but as an introduction level, Shaper 3D, which you can get as an education, you know, license if you're going to school, is a great way to get into CAD. It's simple, it's easy, um, the learning curve is not too steep, uh, it, it pretty much walks you through each of the feature sets, there's a, a tutorial. Next, you know, you've been watching is a uh, an AR app, you know, that I just downloaded from the app store and it's able to take STL files from Shaper 3D and put it in to the, the augmented reality space. Um, it's great. I, I like it. It gives you a sense of uh, what is the final product going to be? How big is it? In that case, I just used it to kind of show an exploded view of my computer case you know, from, from the inside, which I think it's, it's an awesome uh, engineering tool to be able to see the inside of an object without actually having to open it. So this next clip is pretty much a prototype. This was one of the few, uh, um, I would say, mistakes that I made. Actually, no, I'm not going to lie. I made a lot of mistakes. I'm not even going to, like, try to cover that up. But when designing something for, like, an ITX computer case, there are certain... Uh, uh, component measurements that I needed to do. So here, you know, I, I built up that nice looking case. It, it looked great. You know, it, it actually was one of my original designs, but I didn't measure, you know, the graphics card. I didn't measure the power supply. So here you can see me, you know, Googling graphics cards and trying to figure out, you know, what do I Dual want slots to and, you know, lengthwise. But for this case, at least my case, I wanted it to be all mini ITX components. So what is the most powerful, smallest component, uh, ITX component form factor I can get, you know, and design around that. So here I'm just looking at, you know, <laughs> forms and, you know, people's uh, uh, input on, you know, what are the sizes for these, uh, uh, these graphics cards. So I decided on catting a ITX form factor graphics card that's dual slot. And they're fairly standard uh, in terms of, you know, their dimensions. Um, and <laughs> yeah, that, that one was a real, uh, real mind bender for me because I was like, oh man, I got my case made. Now I got to figure out how am I going to put this into it? You know, like what, what's the process here? So right now what you're watching is that I'm trying to make a fin system for the graphics card. And I guess this is one of the limitations of this program is that it doesn't have an array feature. And if you don't know what that is, that's fine. It basically allows you to make multiple geometries or sketches that can, um, you know, just exactly what I did there, just put them in an array with a certain distance and not have to do it manually one by one. You know, so the, yeah, there, there are some pros and cons and, you know, that's one of the cons of this one, this program is that there's no array function, which 
Again, if you don't know what that is, it's fine. I'll probably explain it in a later video. Or you could look it up. Most people just look it up. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad that you're here and you were able to kind of just see my process, you know, and, you know, just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share more of what I did wrong, you know, <laughs> so you all don't do the same mistakes. But if you really, really want to make a, uh, you know, any type of product, and it doesn't have to be a computer case, you know, models, um, you know, just the uh, things that, that help you in the, in, in the real world, like I made another... Uh, soap holder for my sink just because I thought it was you know It'd be neat to have a soap holder. Yeah, this is a great program to start and you don't have to buy a 3d printer you could get all of your stuff uh, printed online But I will say though is that you know, this is a great program to start and Then pair it with augmented reality and then you could start viewing your 3d objects in space and then you can get it printed so I hope this helps out and I hope that, you know, in the future I'm going to make a more in-depth video on my revision for this case. All right, now I'm going to show you the inside of the actual 3D printed case. So it has a tri-configuration, you know, a little unorthodox in terms of the component placement, but I had kind of like a visual style I wanted to do and I, I think it turned out uh, fairly well. Uh, I like this configuration. It was unique. It was different. Um, it fulfilled the one fan for the entire case um, limitation that I wanted. I wanted it to be fairly uh, quiet, so one system fan pulling all the hot air throughout all the faces I thought was a very good uh, thermal design. Um, a lot of inspiration came from the Apple G4 Cube an old computer you know I liked it as a kid I thought it was cool because it looked like it was uh, floating they built this acrylic leg for it and then all the wires came down so here I wanted to emulate that um, and maybe in a future revision I wanted to kind of float also maybe using some transparent PLA or translucent PLA so yeah it's uh, it came out I had to use uh, Nintendo NES color scheme to fit the pro the group projects uh, requirements but, you know, so far, functionally, it works as a computer case. And right now, I'm plugging in all of the video cables and power cables, and I'm gonna turn it on. So I got the computer to turn on. Um, I noticed there were like uh, clicking noises or something was hitting the chassis fan. I should have actually put a uh, screen guard for that fan up top, just so it doesn't catch any of the cables, but I, uh, neglected to do that so you can see me here re rearranging the wires and making sure that it has enough clearance so you know nothing gets caught but other than that it works hey guys thanks for sticking out to the very end this is pretty much the end of the video please subscribe I'm going to try to grow this channel into a free how-to video and, you know, if I can make a little bit of something from that ad money, I'd really appreciate it. But for the most part, I'm more, more focused on making quality content that would show you how to use, you know, the, the technology out there and the applications out there to make something, you know, that, that's meaningful for you. So for me, this computer gaming case, you know, was a, it was a huge challenge, but it was a passion and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my process and you know how I kind of came to a working prototype um, again subscribe and then until next time I'll see you later